is a mission impossible. I don't know what it is. And who gives this young lady to be married to this young man? My, uh, her mom and I do. Amen. We're going to pray and then let you be seated, all right? Our Father, we thank you for this glorious day that we celebrate your design for marriage, one man and one wife. We ask you to bless Trace and Lydia with a wonderful, joyful life together. They love you and serve you. 
glorify you with their lives. We thank you that for all the people that are here today that brought them to the place they are that are a part of their lives, we ask you to bless them and may this be a joyous occasion, celebration for everyone here. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. On behalf of the Rumaiki family and the Bates family, we are thrilled to have you here today. We're thanking God for the answered prayer that the hurricane didn't bring the rain all the way here. <laughs> and we thank the Lord that we know how to get a hurricane, just get Trace and Lady to get married, and here they go. <laughs> We're thankful for you being here. and Thank you for taking time on a Saturday to be here to celebrate uh, not only their wedding, their marriage vows are going to be taken a moment, but thank the Lord for all that you've done to make them the people they are today. The reason you're here is because you mean something special to them, and so thank you on their behalf and on my behalf. So this is a wedding covenant. This is a marriage we're celebrating, and this is God's design. We didn't just make up this in America. This is God's design. He put the first man with the first woman. When he made Eve, Adam was quite impressed. <laughs> he said, whoa, man. <laughs> and I think today we have a glorious picture of a lady and a young man that have kept themselves for each other to be married on this wonderful day. But it wasn't our idea, it was God's idea. God made up marriage, it's his design. And number two, Jesus Christ, our Lord, reiterated the importance of marriage when he was asked in Matthew chapter 19, what about divorce, what about this? And Jesus said, from the beginning it was not so. He said, but God in the beginning, he made a male and female. And he said, added to what Jesus, what God said in the garden, he said, what therefore God hath joined together, let no man separate. This is for life. Amen? Amen. And I'm thrilled that this young couple is committed to doing that. The Apostle Paul likened marriage also under a picture of Christ in the church. Now I'd like to give you a charge. It'd be $500, please. No. <laughs> I'd like to give you a charge. And uh, the charge basically, we're coming together. So these are some things that you're going to hopefully help you in your marriage. And I'll give you three quick things. They're real easy. They're not ABCs, they're just Cs, all right? Because that's about what I made in school. So <laughs> the first C that you're going to need to build your house upon, and I have enjoyed so much as my wife and I have had the privilege to talk to Lydia and Trace and uh, just watch them giggle and laugh and love each other and talk about how exciting it is to about to get married. I'm telling you, it makes me cry to think about it. And... Um, and one of the things we always talk about is communication, and you have to have communication. Everybody talks about communication. It's pretty simple. It's talking, and it's listening, and knowing when to do which one. <laughs> that gets complicated if I'm talking when she's listening. I mean, the other way. I've made that terrible mistake in my life before, and my wife reminds me it's my turn to listen. Amen? And so I'm really blessed. So I've learned, Trace that I do a lot better if I listen better and I talk less. And so I'm looking forward to watching what God's doing and uh, what he's going to do in your life. But communication is talking. And when you're talking, just a few little tips about talking. Make sure your words are kind and gentle and thoughtful. Words are a powerful thing. They can build you up or they can tear you down. And... Um, it's a powerful, powerful thing. Make sure your words are kind, gentle. David said that thy gentleness had made me great. You'll be a great man, and you're a great man, Trace. Be a gentle man. Not just a gentleman, but a gentle man, and you are. And then, not only they need to be kind, they need to be thoughtful, but I encourage you to make them sweet. Because you may have to eat those words one day. <laughs> So, if I could give you a couple things about communication. Talking, make sure you say what you mean and say it gentle and kind. Talking is not just your words, though. It's also your body language and it's your tones. You've heard it been said, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. And um, we've all said things the wrong way. And wish we could put those words back in the box and take those tones away. So not only our tone, but our body language. Somebody said, I want to think it was 10% of our communication is words and 90% is our tone and our body language. So keep a good body language, keep a good tone. And uh, not only talking though, but listening. Listening's really hard for most guys. 
because we already <laughs> think we know what the answer is before you finish the sentence. So we have to learn to listen better. But when you're listening, you know, I'll give you some good advice, and you already know this. Everybody talks about it. Take your eyes. How many of you remember when we used to have a life without a cell phone? Can anybody remember that? I remember when cell phones came out first and they were mm -hmm. texting, everybody was texting. We always said, that is so rude. I was talking to them and they pulled out their phone and started texting. It's becoming common these days. And so I would encourage you, put away your phone and say, I'm here to listen. I'm available. So when you're talking, let your words be gentle and kind. Let your body language be encouraging. Let your tone be right. And then be a good listener. Take time to listen to everything she has to say. Take time to listen to everything that he has to say and say, listen, I want to hear everything you got to say. Make your home a little happy place where the door shuts, you're there in a little heavenly wonder all by yourselves. And sometimes it's a good idea to just turn the old phone off and say, hey, I want to hear what's going on with you. I want to hear what's going on with you. So be a communicator. Number two, not only communicating, you need to build your life. If you're going to build a good marriage, you're going to have to have not only communicating, but cooperating. Cooperating means I'm willing to do something about what I just talked about. People get upset about the verse that says, uh, wives being subjected to your husband. But that was God's plan. They, get up, they don't get upset about husbands loving your wives as Christ loved the church. That's what we ought to be. But even before those two verses, the verse before that says, in Ephesians 5.21, it says that, that we should submit ourselves one to another in the fear of the Lord. This is your best friend. This is your best friend. Make sure this is a person you treat with gentleness. This is your best friend. You're on a team together. Cooperate. Put her desires first. Put his desires first. Marriage is not 50-50. It's 100-0. Give 100. Expect zero. Then if you get something back, you're really happy. You got something back. <laughs> So it's not just 50-50. Give 100-0. And I've watched you two both go out of your way to make the other one feel like they're the most important person in the world. And that is a beautiful thing. There's nothing more beautiful than innocence and genuine, unconditional love you've shown for each other. But not only are you going to have to have communication, you're going to have to have uh, cooperation, but I think the most important thing you need to have in your home, and this is where I really think it's important, and that's to have consecration consecration means a consecrated home set set aside for god joshua when he stood before the people of israel he called them all together and he said i want you to choose you this day whom you're going to serve trace you're leaving my house i'm sad about it Y'all can move back anytime and hang out with us. We like it. <laughs> you're having to leave. I, I, and I'm glad you throw to leave and cleave, and that's a beautiful thing. But you're welcome home anytime. Please come. Stay with us anytime. But I want to say, you're establishing a new home. And now you're the man. And you're the woe man. The woman. The man and the woman together that established what your house is going to be like. It's going to be a consecrated home. Joshua told the people, choose you this day whom you're going to serve either the gods before the flood all the false gods or the gods of the amorites and all the people around you are you going to be like everybody else you don't want a home like everybody else he said but as for me and my house we will serve the lord I have a consecrated home where it's not just a plaque on the wall that says, as for me and my house will serve the Lord. But it's the true people that you really are, that you decided, I'm going to make this a home where Christ is honored. And he can come in here anytime. Anything happens in this house, he's welcome. He's going to be the leader of our home. And I would just encourage you, communicate, cooperate, and consecrate. This is the first day of the best part of the rest of your life. And I'm so excited for you. And I just want to say we're blessed, all of us, to be a part of this today. You're witnesses before God. In a moment, you're going to take some vows. And I'm just so excited to watch what God's done to bring you together. So we just bow for prayer just for one moment. Father, I thank you for Trace. 
I thank you for Lydia. I thank you for bringing them together from literally different countries around the world to provide the right spouse, the right wife, and the right husband for each one of them. And I pray, Lord, that you continue to encourage them and strengthen them. And may their little home be a place of heaven on earth where unconditional love is given out, where forgiveness and grace and joy and happiness happens every day. I pray you bless them in a special way. Lord, if you decide to bless them with children, fill their house up with joy and love. And Lord, do all the things that we want to, to see you do in our lives as we try to glorify you. Bless this couple, I pray, with long life and much love and happiness. Joy in the Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. We love you. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for being who you are. We are so blessed right now. I think we got the best son and best daughter law in the entire world. Or we could have asked for a better couple and relationship and an example for all these people. Thank you. I love you, man. You're way better than that, John. <laughs> such an honor for me to be able to share in this great celebration of marriage with Trace and Lydia as well as these wonderful families. And uh, Pastor Gill, thank you for your charge a while ago. I think I recommitted my life and my marriage to the Lord. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for that. As I begin my remarks today, I just want to share a few things with Trace and Lydia that I, I pray that God will use in your life to help you and to encourage you. First of all, be interested in each other's interests. Second, have interests of your own. Third, reach decisions together. Companionship means the ability to talk about each other's desires and to reach decisions. Number four, Laugh together and always learn to laugh at yourself. <laughs> Number five, always tell the truth. Six, feel the joy of joyfulness. Shared moments of happiness are necessary for companionship. A beautiful sunset, 
an athletic event, the delight of good music, a book, a play, a beautiful garden, a work of art, the laughter of a child, the satisfaction of a job well done, the repayment of a debt, the recovery of health, the lifting of anxiety, and the making of new friends, all are bits of joyfulness. Number seven, learn to pray together. And then, perhaps the most important of all, share your faith together in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Trace and Lydia, you will now share your vows to one another and before God, your families, and these friends that have gathered. These vows are breakable only by death. Trace, would you repeat after me? I, Trace. I, Trace. Take thee, Lydia. Take thee, Lydia. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or for poorer. For richer or for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. For as long as we sh both shall live. For as long as we both shall live. So help me God. So help me God. And Lydia, would you repeat after me? I, Lydia. I, Lydia. Take thee, Trace. Take thee, Trace. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. Better, or for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, or for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. For as long as we both shall live. For as long as we both shall live. So help me God. So help me God. The giving and exchanging of the rings ratifies and seals the vows that Trace and Lydia have just made to one another. As a token of your vows, you will now exchange these rings. So uh, this one actually might be a little too big for Lydia's finger. That man over there has a ring. Okay. <laughs> Bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> Tricked him, huh? Yeah, they did. Right. <laughs> Trace, would you put this ring on Lydia's hand and would you repeat after me? With this ring. With this ring. I pledge my life and love to you. I pledge my life and love to you. And Lydia, would you respond, I accept your ring. I accept your ring. And your promise of life and love. And your promise of life and love. Lydia, would you now take this ring and place this on Trace's hand, and would you repeat after me? With this ring. With this ring. I pledge my life and love to you. I pledge my life and love to you. And Trace, would you respond, I accept your ring. I accept your ring. And your promise of life and love. And your promise of life and love. Trace and Lydia, you are no longer two independent persons but you are now one. And what therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Trace, you may kiss your bride. <laughs> I'm now proud to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Trace Bates. <laughs>
address. I've it's lost that flower right. like three times. Tell me how it feels to be married. It's <laughs> surreal. <laughs> it I can't. Surreal. I keep I, my I flower. I keep losing. Sorry about that. We are very blessed. Wow. <laughs> wow, this feels so weird. This is so weird. You've been doing this No, this. This feels very weird. I know. I know. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's right. Thank y'all, everyone. Less got left behind. Uh -oh. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Thank you, Ellie. I love you. No, stop the Chris. Grace, it's your job now. <laughs> <laughs>now bro in laws <laughs> bro in laws yeah it doesn't want to stay wow this is so weird did you not play it like it's I'm still just like what in the world <laughs> wow yeah, I think you're right I think you're right <laughs> I'm about to get cake smashed. You think you will? Well, you're so beautiful. I don't think I could do it on you. <laughs> I think you could. <laughs> right down here. Yeah, right. Just here down. <laughs>